Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Net Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Sean Mellenbacher from Oregon State University Hazelnut Breeding Program. He and his team have done a fantastic job at, at getting eastern filbert blight resistant uh, varieties into the industry. Uh, we've come a long way from where the industry was plagued and uh, with, with just blight infested orchards everywhere. I know we still have some older orchards out there today. But although growers may feel a lot more comfortable in dealing with eastern filbert blight, there are concerns for what may lie ahead with, with a strain of this fungus that's uh, currently located on the east coast uh, that's affecting the hazelnuts over there. Can you tell us about that, what growers should know? Well, we're thankful to the Oregon Hazelnut Commission and growers themselves for funding the breeding program for decades now. And that's what allowed us to develop many resistant cultivars. They are resistant in Oregon, but when I ship them back to New Jersey, uh, the resistance from Gasaway no longer holds up. But fortunately, we now have 120 resistant sources working with Rutgers, and I'm able to ship a lot of my plant material back to New Jersey for testing. So we do have resistance that holds up, and we have mapped many of those sources of resistance and have DNA markers for them. So we are working on new varieties with different sources of resistance, including stacks of resistance genes. And tell me, what's the likelihood of this strain of this fungus making its way from the East Coast to the West? I know we're in a, a global, very much a global society today. So things move around really fast, you know, like COVID and all these things. So tell, what's the likelihood? How does this work? Uh, we think that eastern filbert blight found its way to the Pacific Northwest in 1960. So that's a several decades gap since humans were moving back and forth, but on the Oregon Trail they didn't move too fast. Uh, humans today move around a lot more, but still the Oregon Department of Agriculture has a quarantine that prohibits importation of plant material of Coralus from east of the Rocky Mountains. And that should delay the uh, introduction of new isolates of the fungus. The current varieties that we have, how are they impacted by this strain of, of the blight? Is it, is it as, if, as if there's no resistance at all? I would have to check with Tom Molnar at Rutgers University about that, but my impression is that uh, they still get less disease and smaller cankers than really susceptible varieties like Annis and Daviana. It's just that the resistance is not like it is in Oregon, where in most cases we don't have to spray. Well, good to know. I think we can be pretty confident that the hazelnut plant breeding program can come up with new varieties and resistance to this fungal strain of the disease as before it moves in. Would you say we feel pretty comfortable with that? We're in a good position to do that, yes. Unlike what happened uh, back in the 60s, right? <laughs> yes, uh, the previous time we had no source of resistance. We didn't know the life cycle of the pathogen. Uh, we're in a much better position now with a lot more knowledge and a lot more tools. Great, but nonetheless, lots of work to do. Oh, yeah. So we appreciate your good work and the good work at Oregon State University. Read more about these things in Pacific Net Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, PacificNetProducer.com.